okay so we are starting a new topic communicable disease okay and under which first of all we are going to discuss respiratory infections okay smallpox smallpox as all of you know that it is the only disease which has been eradicated worldwide okay so smallpox who causes smallpox obviously it's a viral disease and the virus will be variola major okay so the causative agent will be variola major last case seen in india was in 1975 and the last case in the world was in 1977 you know who has a particular criteria that when do we say a last case last case means suppose a case has occurred in a particular area or in a, in a particular country after that 3 years have gone 3 years have passed with no further case anywhere okay so then you can say that that particular disease is eradicated okay so last case in india is 1975 last case in world as i told you 1977 in somalia so eradication was 1977 plus 3 1980 okay eradication declared by who on the 8th of may 1980 now see what is the basis for smallpox eradication what are the basis why was this smallpox eradicated what was the basis number 1 there is no known animal reservoir no long term carrier state very important see if a disease has a carrier state what's a carrier a case means some, someone who is harboring the bacteria or the virus plus showing the symptoms carrier means they are harboring the bacteria or virus not showing the symptoms okay so if a carrier state will exist then it will become very difficult to eradicate yes or no so if there is no long term carrier state then it becomes very easy for a disease eradication okay another thing is that smallpox one infection it will provide lifelong immunity okay case detection is also simple there is a characteristic rash will come to it okay it's a non pleomorphic rash centrifugal rash okay we'll come to it we'll look at the differences between the rash of smallpox and chickenpox so case detection simple due to characteristic rash and we all know highly effective vaccine available and who discovered the vaccine edward jenner the vaccine against smallpox discovered by edward jenner so this is the difference between the rash of smallpox and the rash of chickenpox remember in case of chickenpox the rash moves towards the center centripetal whereas in case of smallpox the rash it will move out okay move outwards away from the center centrifugal so chickenpox centripetal rash smallpox will be centrifugal rash now chickenpox pleomorphic what is the meaning of the word pleomorphic pleomorphic means you can see all the stages of the rash at once okay you can see the macule you can see the papule you can see the scab you can see all the stage of the rash at the same time but in case of smallpox it's a non pleomorphic rash you cannot see all the stage of the rash at the same time okay so in case of smallpox it will be a non pleomorphic rash now chickenpox rash has a very typical appearance which is acts as an mcq dew drop on rose petal appearance okay dew drop on rose petal appearance smallpox has no such appearance one more very important thing is that chickenpox rash is superficial you know smallpox rash is deep so whenever the smallpox rash occurs it will be a deep rash and you know pits will be formed pits will be formed on the skin and sometimes those pits may ulcerate into the deeper tissue okay so it's a deep seated rash in case of smallpox it's a superficial rash in case of chickenpox multilocular smallpox unilocular chickenpox now coming to the distribution chickenpox rash it will generally affect the flexor surface of the limbs the flexor surface this is the flexor surface extensor surface flexor surface okay extensor surface flexor surface so it is affecting the axilla the groin and the flexor surface but if you see smallpox smallpox generally it does not affect the axilla and it generally occurs on the the rash will occur on the extensor surface okay so in chickenpox the rash is affecting the axilla groin and the flexor surface whereas in case of smallpox it will affect the extensor surface and spare the axilla one more thing is that in in case of chickenpox you will find the rash evolves very fast smallpox the rash will evolve slowly and this chickenpox rash you know over the palm and the sole over the palm and the sole it does not occur 
small pox rash will definitely occur over the palm and sole does not spare the palm and sole so see it will affect the palm and sole whereas in case of a chicken pox it will spare the palm and soles and one more thing is i told you that in case of chicken pox you are seeing a pleomorphic rash okay macule papule okay vesicle then uh, scab so whenever you are seeing this macule papule vesicle whatever uh, form of rash you are seeing you will find a surrounding inflamed area okay red swollen area so there is inflammation around the vesicles whereas in case of the smallpox rash there is no inflammation around the vesicles generally no inf inflammation so we will we can go, go through it once again okay very important difference chart chicken pox centripetal smallpox will be centrifugal chicken pox you can see all the stage of the rash at the same time so it's pleomorphic dew drop on rose petal appearance it will affect the axilla groin the flexor surface smallpox will affect the extensor surface chicken pox is a superficial rash smallpox is a deep seated rash okay deep seated rash that's why you know it can cause deformities one of the biggest problems of smallpox was that those people who were affected they had deformities over the face mainly the face got deformed why it's a deep seated rash okay and, and the rash may ulcerate into the deeper tissue up to the bone also okay it may destroy the bones also of the face multilocular unilocular slow evolution rapid evolution this will spare the palm and sole this can affect the palm and sole inflammation happens around vesicle does not happen around vesicle okay now coming to chicken pox what is the causative agent causative agent of chicken pox will be varicella zoster okay causative agent is varicella zoster also called herpes zoster okay so it's a human herpes virus type 3 varicella human herpes virus type 3 varicella incubation period is very important for chicken pox it will be 14 to 16 days now what is the source of infection source of infection are mainly case okay and what will be the mode of transmission see it's a respiratory infection so trans transmission will be by droplets so it's by respiratory or the air droplets now period of communicability is very important remember chicken pox is communicable two days two days before the appearance of rash and up to five days after appearance of rash okay so it will be two days before the onset of the rash up to five days after the onset of rash two days before rash and five days after rash so if we consider rash in the middle two days here and five days here so total one week one week can become the period of communicability okay which is long that's why you know those who are having chicken pox if children are having chicken pox they are generally asked to avoid coming to schools because uh, there is a period of communicability of one week at least they should be not uh, they should not be coming to school for one to two weeks secondary attack rate of chicken pox is more than 90 percent very important in one of the recent all india exams there was question asked on secondary attack rate case fatality rate okay so you should know some specific secondary attack rate which i will mention chicken pox you should know it is more than 90 percent vaccine is there it's called the it's a live vaccine and the strain is what it's the oka it's the oka strain so it's also called the oka vaccine okay now what can be the late complication late complication can be shingles i'll tell you what is shingles see what happens is suppose a child is infected with uh, this varicella virus human herpes virus 3 so after infection happens there will be the symptoms now suppose he is cured what can happen is this herpes virus it can remain dormant in one of our cranial nerve ganglions like you have heard about gasserian ganglion gasserian ganglion is a trigeminal nerve ganglion so this virus can remain dormant there now suppose in the future that same child he has high fever or any sort of disease where his immunity is lowered okay so whenever his immunity is lowered taking that opportunity what can happen is that virus which is dormant in his gasserian ganglion it may reactivate and whenever it will reactivate it will affect that particular nerve okay it will affect the trigeminal nerve di nerve distribution and that will cause a painful condition that painful condition is called shingles okay so shingles you, you can define as recrudescence okay shingles can be defined as what shingles can be defined as recrudescence 
और रीएक्टिवेशन ऑफ वेरीसेला रीएक्टिवेशन ऑफ द वेरीसेला वायरस टेकिंग अपॉर्चुनिटी ऑफ द लोअर्ड इम्यूनिटी स्टेटस ऑफ द चाइल्ड ओके सो लेट कॉम्प्लिकेशन इज सिंगल्स हाउ डू डू द डायग्नोसिस यू हैव टू एग्जामिन द वेसिकुलर फ्लूड यू हैव टू एग्जामिन द वेसिकुलर फ्लूड अंडर इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोप ओके सो एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ द वेसिकल अंडर इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोप एंड वन मोर थिंग इज दैट देर इज अ पैसिव इम्यूनिटी ऑल्सो अवेलेबल फॉर चिकन पॉक्स दैट्स अ वेरीसेलर जॉस्टर इम्यूनोग्लोबलिन इट शुड बी गिवन विद इन सेवेंटी टू आवर्स ऑफ एक्सपोजर वेरीसेलर जॉस्टर इम्यूनोग्लोबलिन इफ गिवन शुड बी गिवन विद इन थ्री डेज ऑफ एक्सपोजर दिस इज अ क्वेश्चन ओके सो वी कैन रिवाइज द पॉइंट्स ओके वट वॉज द इंक्यूबेशन पीरियड ऑफ चिकन पॉक्स फोर्टीन टू सिक्सटीन डेज सेकेंडरी अटैक रेट मोर दैन नाइन्टी परसेंट वॉट इज द मोड ऑफ ट्रांसमिशन मेनली फ्रॉम केसेस वाई आर द मोड ड्रॉपलेट्स ओके हाउ लॉन्ग इज द डिजीज कम्युनिकेबल आई टोल्ड यू टू डेज बिफोर अपियरेंस ऑफ रैश अप टू फाइव डेज आफ्टर अपियरेंस ऑफ रैश सो टोटल कैन बी अ स्प्रेड ऑफ सेवन डेज फाइन इज अ वैक्सीन अवेलेबल येस द मोस्ट कॉमनली यूज वैक्सीन विल बी द लाइव वैक्सीन वट इज द स्ट्रेन वी यूज द ओका स्ट्रेन ओके इज अ पैसिव इम्यूनिटी अवेलेबल सपोज वी वॉन्ट इमीडिएट इम्यूनिटी फॉलोइंग एक्सपोजर टू अ केस देन वॉट यू विल डू यू विल गिव वेरीसेल जॉस्टर इम्यूनोग्लोबलिन विद इन सेवेंटी टू आवर्स ऑफ एक्सपोजर सो दीज पॉइंट्स यू हैव टू नो अलॉन्ग विद द पॉजिटिव एजेंट ओके वेरीसेल ह्यूमन हर्पीज वायरस टाइप थ्री हर्पीज जॉस्टर वट इज द लेट कॉम्प्लिकेशन आई टोल्ड यू शिंगल्स कॉज ऑफ शिंगल्स रेक्रोडेशन और रिएक्टिवेशन विद इन एनी क्रेनियल नर्व गैंग्लियन and that will cause a highly painful condition that painful condition is called shingles okay and chicken pox rash characteristics characteristics i've already told you centripetal rash okay dew drop on rose petal appearance superficial rash not deep seated pleomorphic you can see all the stage of the rash at the same time revise with me okay then it will affect the axilla the groin generally the flexor surface of the limbs spares the palm and sole okay and you can see inflammation around the vesicles so these points you should know okay keep on revising the points which i have show which i am showing you on the slides and uh, slowly you can master it okay now immunoglobulin immunoglobulin is what the immunoglobulin is reserved for immunosuppressed contacts of acute cases so now, now some questions mcq for you a varicella zoster virus infection is more likely to occur in which of the following months so if i ask you is chicken pox having a seasonal distribution is it happening in a particular season yes it happens mainly in the spring okay late winter early spring a season change okay at that time spring uh, like in it will be the month of march month of march early april late february you can see lots of case of chicken pox okay so answer will be march and what is this called this will be called seasonal distribution this will be called seasonal distribution shingles is caused by now we know what is shingles shingles is a late complication of chicken pox i told you it will happen due to recrudescence or reactivation of virus within a cranial nerve ganglion it's a highly painful condition so ultimately the cause will be what it will be the varicella zoster virus what was variola major variola major was the cause of what smallpox cytomegalovirus and toxoplasma they can happen as what they can happen as opportunistic infections in aids yes or no because in hiv when your helper t cell count reduces your cd4 count reduces the immunity status of the person will go down he will become more and more immunocompromised and taking opportunity of immunocompromised conditions the diseases which takes place is called is called opportunistic infections okay and cytomegalovirus and toxoplasma are two very important opportunistic infections in hiv okay so here the answer will be varicella zoster true about chicken pox answer before i answer you answer is it centrifugal rash no centrifugal was small pox so it will be centripetal distribution towards the center moving towards the center rash centripetal superficial revise again superficial pleomorphic okay affects the axilla groin affects the flexor surface inflammation around vesicle 
spares the palm and sole. Okay, that's the way. Chicken pox is infective. We have discussed right now. Chicken pox, the infective period. Infective means basically they are asking you what? They are asking you the period of communicability. So it will be two days before, two days before the onset of rash, up to five days after the onset of rash. Okay. So this will be option B. Two days before and five days after rash appearance. Seven days total. So in the further slides, we will discuss further respiratory infections, measles, mumps, rubella. Stay tuned.